Hey guys, so I'm gonna start by saying that this is more of an experimental build and uh, I would not recommend you to do this build exactly. However, there is still value in this video and uh, I would actually only not recommend to do Raider with this build but you could do Saboteur with this build and I think it would perform better. So, uh, what is this? I, wonder if it, I wanted to mainly focus on Flamethrower Trap and Lightning Spire Trap and the idea was basically to farm ultimatums. You go in the ultimatums, you throw in traps and then you run around while the traps do damage and you are basically safe. I am actually using uh, Petrified Blood as well in here. So I was running around with 2.5k HP in tier 16 maps and I was surviving ultimatum. So in a sense this build succeeded but in, um, in our sense where it did not succeed was the cooldown. As a raider you get massive speed and it feels so good to run so fast as a raider with no conditions. And Raider also gets dodge, gets speed, gets uh, immune to elemental ailments which is very nice and gets uh, auto exposure. However, it did not perform that well for clear speed because the cooldown is just not, not short enough. So as a summator you would have more AoE, you would have more trap throwing speed, uh, you would also have more damage, uh, average hit damage and you would also have uh, more cooldown recovery rate. So you would actually be able to spam traps more. However, you would have less movement speed, a lot less movement speed. You would also have less dodge, no immunity to elemental ailments. And uh, as a saboteur, the, your skill will also cost less life because I linked my traps with life tap so that I could re reserve all of my mana. This build is also not really expensive. But at least I was playing with plus two tabula all the way until like level 85. And it was very sketchy and very unpleasant because I'm playing low life, which was not probably the best idea, but I just wanted more damage and low life was right right there. I could just take it low life and just use Petrified Blood. So I am using Petrified Blood, uh, which is reserving my life, but I also had to get a helmet enchantment to reduce the Petrified Blood reservation. So it is pretty scary to run around with low life. Uh, also having no region, almost no region as a raider. When you link it to a life tap and you only have 2.5k HP, it's very scary when you throw traps and you lose noticeable amount of your current uh, life. And once you start taking degen, it's even scarier. For that reason, I wanted to get doppelganger's body armor. By default, you are sane with this body armor and you are getting 25% up to 25% less physical and here's damage taken uh, while sane and that includes uh, dots. So that's very nice. It's like countering countering the drawbacks of petrified blood. And another thing of uh, doppelgangers is that you get you regenerate 10% of your life over one second uh, when hit while sane. However, since you are reserving half of your life and your effective HP is 2.5k, you are still gonna be uh, getting regen based on your maximum life. So you're actually getting 500, uh, well in this case 550 life regen per second, which is essentially around 20% of your unreserved life. So it is pretty effective in that sense. However, it, this region is only for one second. And Petrified Blood, you still take 60% of the damage instantly, but the remaining 40% is done uh, with the damage over time, which I believe you can reduce with the Soul of Arakalis Pantheon power. 5% reduce damage taken from damage over time. So the scary part is, is just the region. That's why Double Gangers, I think, Kinda works well, but I'm not too sure. I'm now thinking maybe it's not even worth using doppelgangers body armor. But then again, I'm not quite sure how would you get enough regen. Uh, you could have, uh, I believe, hunters body armor with every four seconds you get a life recovery or over one second, I believe. But that's inconsistent, and uh, you don't want to wait four seconds if you're taking damage and you are dying. And uh, by the way, this is a dodge build, raider dodge. Uh, I have 65-55 block, sorry dodge, when I use the flask. Uh, evasion is not great, but I could use, instead of sulfur flask, I could use the, what is it called, stimulant flask, the one that gives evasion, uh, to get more evasion. Also, most of my items, I didn't really think about um, ahead of time, and I just got items that work for me without thinking, so I, they don't have evasion. Otherwise, you would have evasion, you would be able to dodge more, well, evade more, and it would be tanker. So the playstyle is you have to kind of time your trap throwing 
correctly because if you just spam everything you're gonna run around unable to throw any more traps elsewhere and you also have to aim you have to position your traps uh, you can't just throw traps aimlessly you have to you see the enemy pack you have to throw one trap into enemy pack then run see the other enemy pack throw it again so you can just throw your traps randomly and and that takes a bit of time getting used to uh, actually aiming and positioning traps but i would say the build was pretty interesting and uh, while it's not the best build for the end game i tried to do a shaper but the maven kept healing shaper and it was super annoying any bosses that move a lot are very annoying uh, like uh, phoenix was a bit annoying because it kept moving and, and charging from from one side to another side so if you want to play this build know that end game bosses are not going to be very very good with this but if you just want to farm maps and ultimatum this could work but i would still recommend you to go saboteur you would have less speed but the speed is wasted that's another thing the speed of raiders is wasted because you run fast you throw trap you run to the next pack throw again next pack again and then at some point you're gonna run to enemy and then you both of your skills are gonna be on cooldown so you're gonna have to stop and wait so why have speed if you still have to stop and wait so in, in that sense better go saboteur i'm gonna show passive 3 how it would look like but it's basically the same it's just a different starting point and a different class and i did not want to use non-cooldown traps uh, because at that point if you use non-cooldown traps then why even have cooldown traps like it's not it doesn't become a main focus and i wanted the main focus to be cooldown traps so i did not add any like lightning traps or fire trap or explosive trap anything like that now other things that i was using as well was a uh, siphoning trap siphoning trap is pretty cool it's kind of forgotten forgotten thing so siphoning trap gives you basically a region and the more enemies it attaches to up to 10 enemies uh, the more region you get for life and uh, mana but it has some kind of weird delay it's very unpleasant when you throw a trap it starts attaching but the region doesn't instantly doesn't get calculated instantly like it attaches to 10 enemies but you only get in this case let's say 300 uh, life region and then after like one second then the other conditional region kicks in and then you get another 300 region so it's very inconsistent and very delayed but basically i just throw siphoning trap in the middle of uh, ultimatums and run around so I, I do get region if i get hit i get regent and uh, just also throw um flame throw trap and lightning spire into the middle and just keep running around in circles hoping that i don't die because sometimes you will just get one shotted i also did not go with the staff so i only have a true one six link setup which is in my body armor another pseudo five link uh, like a very weak pseudo six link setup is in my gloves which i have advanced traps and uh, plus one to socketed ew gems which i am using for lighting spire trap and uh, in my main setup is a uh, flamethrower trap which is my main damage for clear speed and for for single target now both flamethrower trap and lighting spire trap are affected by cast speed and the more cast speed you get you get the more frequently they are supposed to hit but in power building it does not calculate onslaught or in general cast speed let's say if i were to link flamethrower trap with faster casting it does nothing absolutely nothing nothing changes not even cast speed not even cast rate nothing just the mana cost the numbers in powerful building are not not very accurate don't don't be discouraged that the numbers are so low uh, also this build has quite a lot of conditions uh, i do have bear trap to increase the damage i also use the siphoning trap to get region i also use assassin's mark on manual cast also just recently while doing shaper added frost bomb because the goddamn maven kept healing shaper <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah it does have quite a lot of conditional things i do have skitter bots uh, to apply chill and shock to nearby enemies because i'm using uh, hypothermia also using zeldra to get more crit because this is a crit build uh, i added vitality very low level just to just to get a bit more region in general i probably would not recommend to go low life with this just drop petrified blood just don't take pain attunement and uh, you would probably have less stressful time playing this build you would have less damage but as a saboteur you would still get uh, more damage when with raider average hit damage i mean i'm gonna include battle building in board code in video description and it's gonna have a different uh, trees one is for saboteur one is for uh, raider 
So Sabotor would have more average damage. Sabotor would have less life with this tree uh, and uh, less dodge. So again, I'm not really recommending either of those, but I think Sabotor would still be better. Uh, this is for level 9 to 1 Sabotor. Uh, you would get more EOE, you would get more cooldown recovery and trap throwing speed and uh, blind around you, you would also be taking less damage from blind enemies so that's another kind of a reduction but you would also need to add exposure because Raider just gets exposure for all elements just by being Raider <laughs> so you could uh, actually technically get even more damage by getting exposure, fire exposure like wave of conviction uh, but then you wouldn't get like lightning exposure again you, you would have a lot more damage average damage with um, saboteur but it may not be as tanky it, it's gonna be slower and uh, it's not, not gonna have as, uh, as much dodge uh, now when it comes to items I'm not gonna go over everything but you kind of want this enchantment on boots because with traps it doesn't count as you critting because traps don't count as your your hits so for that also reason you don't want like flame dash you don't want uh, you don't want void sphere or anything else that it are your hits uh, because then you would lose the crit chance and other than that gloves like i said advanced traps or it could be also uh, with the traps and mine support instead if you go saboteur you don't need blind uh, if you go raider you kind of want blind the amulet I actually went with the reduce reservation of skills because like I said I wanted to match petrified blood as close as possible to 50% rather than 56% uh, which is what you would have if you don't have a reduced reservation of skills. Uh, you could have like reduced reservation up here uh, or even, even here but that's a couple of points more. So if you just level more you don't you don't even need amulet like that but you want either spell damage, area damage. Actually, previously I was using I was using this amulet. It was giving me spell damage and area damage. This was veiled mod, so it was giving more area damage than it normally would, and it is actually more damage than with this amulet. Uh, for the helmet, like I said, uh, petrified blood enchantment to reduce reservation. There are many ways to <laughs> optimize items and and use different approach, but yeah. Uh, for the weapon plus one fire, I you would want plus one to all spell skill, all spell skill gems, uh, because that would also affect the lightning spire trap. But um, I was working on a budget. Other than that, crit chance, crit multi, something like that, spell damage. Same goes for the shield. I took the jewel socket and I forgot to add any jewel, so I'm still missing some some things. But I want to be done with this build. It wasn't very successful build so I don't want to just I don't want to force myself to play it for too long anyway that's gonna be it for now I planned the next build and I think I'm gonna be trying the re relic of the pact which is gonna be interesting to see how it works not the Ivory Tower Ivory Tower is a bait for relic of the pact uh, so the next video will probably be around uh, relic of the pact so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one bye bye